Hi, this is Mark Bunker from Zenu TV. We've just seen released some of the most important newspaper stories written about Scientology in years. The St. Petersburg Times has released a three-part series about the abuses in the upper level of Scientology management. Four people spoke out for the first time. Two of them I never thought we'd hear from. I ran into these two people uh, in Clearwater several times when I lived there in 2000 and 2001 and worked for the Lisa McPherson Trust, talking about Mike Rinder and Marty Rathbun. And Marty Rathbun is the, seems to be the main person that was speaking to the reporters, but Rinder and the others backed up what he had to say. And what he had to say was, was quite shocking. It's not shocking to those of us who have been following this, because Mark Headley has been writing about this for years. But what the newspaper brought to the general public for the first time is the physical abuse dished out by Scientology's tiny little leader, David Miscavige. He was physically assaulting, and still is, I'm sure he's still, well, maybe today he's having a, finding it hard to strike somebody, I don't know. But uh, he has been physically slapping people, and that's what I'm going to call him from now on, Slappy Miscavige. So Slappy has been physically abusing these people. And it's wrong. And I have to say, when, when Mark Headley has been telling these stories of abuse, uh, part of me was saying, well, so what? I mean, that's compared to the, you know, all of the families that have been broken up by disconnection and uh, people's, uh, you know, bank accounts being emptied, forced abortions, compared to all of the other abuses that are widespread in Scientology. The fact that a few executives were slapped around a bit by Miscavige I thought was kind of minor. But I was wrong. It's, it's major. It's, it shows a real damaged psyche. I mean, Slappy was, was acting like the worst cardboard cutout cartoon villain from the worst B movie. I mean, who runs their, their, their empire? by physically assaulting their underlings. I mean, it's outrageous. It, it, it shows that there's something deeply wrong in, in David Miscavige's psyche. And what is it about Scientology that the leader of Scientology couldn't have these flaws addressed? Seriously, if this is the modern science of mental health, if this is the salvation of mankind, why is the leader of Scientology, a petty little dictator, abusing, physically abusing his subservience. It's amazing. And Tommy Davis, the spokesperson, is trying desperately, way, way, way too desperately, to defend Miscavige against these charges. And thank God Tommy Davis is the spokesperson for Scientology because he is like the worst spokesperson they've had since the glorious Heber Gench back in the 80s and 90s. I never thought we'd see that lunacy again, but, but Tommy Davis is accidentally crazy. <laughs> I mean, Heber, Heber knew what he was saying was just crap. Hey, you ought to go back to Germany. Go back to Nazi Germany. That's the type of crap that, that Heber would do. And he knew it was dramatic Rush Limbaugh, Bill O'Reilly type over the top garbage that might appeal to somebody. What Tommy Davis is doing is, is accidental. He doesn't realize the wealth of material that he is giving over to critics when he you know, stands up to defend Miscavige. I mean, for God's sakes, he's saying that, that uh, I have these sworn affidavits that it wasn't Miscavige who was doing all the physical abuse. It was Rinder and Rathbun themselves. They were the abusive people. And Rathman admitted that, yeah, he was abusive. He, he was trying to follow in David Miscavige's footsteps, Slappy, and trying to live up to Slappy standards. So, yeah, he abused some people, too. But let me just ask you this. In my workplace, I don't know what it's like where you were, but if somebody physically assaulted a co-worker at my business, they'd be fired. There wouldn't be a second chance. You punch somebody... You're out of there. You're, you may also be facing a lawsuit. But here they have sworn affidavits 
that they knew that this abuse was going on. Oh, sure, they're saying it went on from Rathbun and not Miscavige. But if that's the case, why didn't they do anything about it? Why? Why didn't they stop it? For God's sakes, their, their other executives were being abused by a madman. Why didn't they stop it? Because that was, abuse was standard. Because Slappy Miscavige was doing that abuse himself. That was standard operating procedure, and it was wrong. You got that slappy? It's wrong. I don't know if you're still raising a fist to anybody right now. You may, with the white heat of global attention put upon you, you may be going, oh, well, maybe I won't slap anyone today. I don't know how long it will be before you start up again, though. And I got to feel sorry for Tommy Davis and, and all the other people who are trotted out to defend Miscavige because their over-the-top hysteria is obviously because they are afraid of David Miscavige the same way every other executive has been afraid of Miscavige since Miscavige took over the, uh, the Scientology religion in a bloody coup. And what Rathbun and Rinder are talking about now, I think they're, they're talking about a palace coup of their own. Whether they want to be in charge, I don't know, but they're saying somebody has to stop David Miscavige. Rathbun says he was sorry he didn't do it while he was in. Now he's trying to take a shot at it from the outside. And uh, he struck an effective blow. It's good to tell the truth. And he told the truth about the Lisa McPherson case, too. At least some of the truth. The fact that evidence was destroyed and, and lots of chicanery went on behind the scenes to derail that lawsuit. And there's nothing we can do about it now. The state's not interesting in pressing charges, even if they could. Statute of limitations has run out. And frankly, I don't think the state would if they could. I think uh, years ago in the, the criminal case, Scientology put so much pressure on Joan Wood that she changed her ruling from death to accidental death. And that gave the state a chance to go, Phew, we're off the hook, we can get out of this. We can just say it, it's unwinnable now and, and just drop it. I wish there would be some justice for Scientology and for the people who are abused by Scientology. Maybe that will happen someday. Maybe David Miscavige's days are finally numbered. Maybe Slappy will find himself slapped in prison. That would be good. That would be a good start. And then perhaps the abuses can stop. You know, I've said this for years. Nobody cares about people auditing in the free zone, for example, because it's not the tech that we're upset with. Sure, I don't believe in the tech. I think the tech is a bunch of bull, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. You, you can believe in it if you want. There are people who believe in acupuncture or whatever. You know, believe in it. Fine, you're not hurting anybody else. You may be emptying out your bank accounts to give to corporate Scientology, but really, on a, a, on a larger scale, what does it matter? What matters are the abuses of Scientology, and that doesn't go on in the free zone. So when Marty Rathbun sets up a little side business of himself, auditing, and I publicized his webpage a while back where he's offering his services, and he's saying, come, get some auditing with me. If you feel it was worth anything, pay me what you feel it was worth. If it was nothing, don't pay me. You know, that's the passing the plate attitude of a religion, not the hard pressure sales tactics of Scientology. And one of the things that Rathbun and the others talk about in these articles are the fact that what we've been saying for years as well, not just about the abuse of Slappy, but, but the, the church is down stat, the numbers keep dropping. And the reason that David Miss, Slappy Miscavige re-released all of Hubbard's writings twice now at least, is because they have to sell to the dwindling market. And what do they have to sell? Hubbard's not writing anything new. It's written. He's dead. So they have to keep repackaging what he's written and selling it to the same customers over and over and over. Oh, it's new now. We, oh, we found some typos. Oh, buy it all over again. And people are forced to buy it all over again. They shouldn't be forced. There should be no force in Scientology. 
At the end of the three-part series, Marty Rathbun is on his motorcycle hiding in the bushes at Gold, waiting 20 minutes for a car to come to the gates so the guard will open the gate for the car, and then he zips out. What kind of church do you have to escape from? Scientology, reform. Slappy, turn yourself in. You can't reform. You're gone. There's something, there's something wrong with you, Slappy. Anyway, read the articles if you haven't. Uh, they are incredible. And thank you, St. Petersburg Times. I hope you win another Pulitzer Prize for this series the way you did the last time you seriously took on Scientology. And for the St. Petersburg Times, remember this. Remember what you wrote about Scientology. Because what's so damn frustrating is you, you know what Scientology is, and you know how they behave. And then you'll go back to writing puff pieces about them. Why? Why do you, why do, you do that? They're corrupt. Fight the corruption. That's what we... That's what we need you for. That's why we have newspapers uh, uh, while they're still around. That, this is the, the great service that you can do. So keep on them. Dust off a place on the shelf for the Pulitzer Prizes. And uh, keep it coming. Till then, I will see you at Zenu TV.